Good afternoon. Welcome to the Theotrade Afternoon Video. I'm Blake Young, and today is March 21st, 2024. Today we're going to talk about three stocks to trade for the three rate cuts. Now, what I'm inferring is that we're pricing in three rate cuts from the Fed this year in 2024. Now, that may not seem to make sense because everything that the Fed has said, pretty much all things the Fed has said, has been that inflation stays high, that we don't have the concerns of the market yet. We haven't seen the slowdown in the market yet, that we have more work to do, that we're not done with what we're doing. All that would seem to say that we're not going to cut rates, and we certainly left rates high. And yet when we look at the dot plot, this is from the Federal Reserve, the FRED, the dot plot, this shows us what the members of the FMC are pricing in. And what we're seeing is the current rate between here and then one, two, three rate cuts where the majority of them think it's going to be by the end of this year. 2024. And we actually can see that we expect even more cuts into 2025, 2026, and the long run, that we're going to see rates drop all the way back down near 2.5%. So why is it that we're pricing that in? Well, we can argue that they're really seeing more data and they're seeing that we are going to see a slowdown, that we're already seeing a slowdown economically, and that they need to re-stimulate the demand of the consumer. The problem is, again, we still have inflation. So the question for me is not whether it's going to happen or not, not whether we have inflation or not. My question is, if we're going to see three rate cuts, what are some trades that we should be looking at? To start with, if we see lower rate, rates over time, especially in 2024, and if we did see over the long run a 2.5% rate, the number one place we should be looking is in real estate. And we'll take a quick, big picture view, and then we'll drop down in some individual stocks here in just a minute. But to start out with, we'll start out with the REIT, R-E-I-T, and we can do the same thing with XLRE. And we're comparing a couple of things. We're looking at inflation, which is going to be this gold to bond ratio, again, peaking at multi-year, if not record highs on the charts that we can pull up, showing that inflation still remains high, at least when comparing gold prices to bond prices. In addition to that, when we look at the REITs compared to the 10-year treasury yield, we see an almost... 80, 90% high correlation, inverse correlation to yields versus REITs. So that means that when yields are dropping, REITs have a tendency to go up and vice versa. You can see throughout this last year, there was some time last April and May and June where we see that, that decoupling of that probabilities. But overall, we remain highly inversely correlated. Again, lower borrowing rates, lower yields from the 10-year treasury, lower mortgage rates, lower commercial loans will drive real estate and REITs higher. And so it means that investors can buy in and consumers can buy in. If we go to XLRE, another ETF that's going to represent about the same, you can see that high, high correlation. In fact, even a little bit better correlation than what we just saw on the REITs. So pushing this forward to our current time frame, just so we can see. You can see that zero to negative 100 inverse correlation continuing for most of the year. So very, very high inverse correlation. And if rates are going to be cut by the Fed three times, that means these TNX rates will continue to drop, which means that real estate will continue to climb. Now, I've talked a lot about the idea that home builders are going to slow down until or if we see rates go down. If we don't see that happen, we should expect this to be a top. But if that rate cut, first rate cut happens, if the probability of that rate cut increases in June as it is expected to do, then we want to watch for the bounce and return higher. Now, whether we want to use this short-term bounce here on our XLRE, our REITs, and go with that, that could be an early enough timing that we could be looking at it this week. However, I'm going to be looking for another dip, another retest down to the 37 area, and watch for a bounce then so that we can get closer to that June potential rate cut. In addition to that, I would be paying close attention to bond prices. If bond prices start to climb and climb aggressively, then that's when I would be looking for the bounce here as well. But we can look at individual stocks. Now, this one is a commercial real estate stock, and I think it's one that has already been knocked down quite a bit for us, but it also feeds into AI. This is Equinix, if I'm pronouncing that right, EQIX. And EQIX is a REIT that is based off of data centers. 
So they have 250 data centers and 70 some metros across 30 plus countries. And this pullback, this aggressive pullback is, I think, discounting the stock quite a bit. We've discounted it down through here. As you can see, they've maintained a fairly sizable earnings per share. They pay a good dividend. And if you see the rate cut happen, we have a high inverse correlation here. We want to zoom into one and negative one. If we see the rate cut happen or signs that the probabilities of the rate cut are going up, this is an area that I think you could put a position on that is fairly low risk at a key support or value area level for the opportunity to collect a high dividend and see the stock go all the way back up. The nice advantage with REITs in this type of environment is that they are required to pay out a specific amount in conjunction with their dividends. And so it becomes a good income stock, a good long-term holding stock, and the opportunity to potentially sell covered calls against it. So it's kind of a triple threat, as it were, if rates cut. And pay attention to, again, that high inverse correlation that will set you up for the timing of the rate cuts and a bounce right near here. And it may be getting close to it already, but if I can buy closer to 800, that could give an opportunity to get into this trade at a discounted value. The dividend as a percentage is only 2%, but it is one that could last for quite some time as I don't see the data centers going away and I see a very consistent dividend paying stock as we've already discounted it to this point. By the way, they also have a very strong five-year trend of earnings per share growth. The next area we're going to look at is financials, but we're not going to be looking for bullish trades on financials. We're going to be looking for bearish trades in financials because we're looking for the positive correlation. When interest rates are high or remaining high or climbing higher, we have a tendency to buy financials assuming that they're going to make higher and higher yields. The problem I have with this is they only will gain and continue to rise if they have excess reserves and the ability to lend money. So high rates does not mean that banks are necessarily going to make money. It can mean that they are not going to make money if they don't have the money to lend. So if they're already pushing higher, regardless of whether they have the extra money or not, and we see it roll over, then those banks, those companies, those regional banks or capital markets could see a major sell-off if they can't lend money and if rates start to fall. So the trade I'll be looking for here is if rates cut, then Wells Fargo, who didn't break through new record highs, didn't reach new 52-week highs, unlike JP Morgan, uh, Bank of America, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, Capital One Financial, Ally Bank, all of them hit new record highs today. Wells Fargo couldn't clear the high. And if they can't clear the high now, what's going to happen if they cut rates? They're probably going to fall back from 58 down to about 47. And that's what I'd be looking for, a... a in out spread or a long put or selling call verticals now because they couldn't break through. And if we see a rate cut, then they'll have less ability to borrow or lend and they will have to make a tighter yield spread when we look at the difference for Wells Fargo. And as a side note, Wells Fargo has also had their net profit margins decreasing over the last three years despite the higher rates. So they're already struggling keeping their margins with higher yield spreads and higher rates. When that tightens down because of rate cuts, they will likely suffer. And we may already put in the top for Wells Fargo. Now, the last stock I'm going to look at is one of the tech sector. Obviously, if lower interest rates are there, the technology sector has a lot of money they spend on research and development, and developing new products. And when rates are falling, they generally invest more and grow more. So we can look at XLK and look at the historic inverse correlations here. We're not really correlated at this moment. And even the stock that we're going to look at next is not one that has a high inverse correlation, but I like it from the price pattern. I like it because it's connected to AI. I like it because there's great growth potential and it's a small cap as well. So all of those things would be supportive of the idea that lower borrowing costs in a small cap in the tech sector with AI and already giving us a bounce so we don't have to wait till we see the rate cut works out for this next one. Now this is Altair Engineering Inc. Also a tech company, it's in the small caps, it appears in the Russell, it's a pretty big company inside the Russell, but this is a high performance computing software company 
and they have all the keywords ready to go, which would be cloud solutions, AI. It's going to have some additional things such as Internet of Things. So this is one that kind of touches in many areas into the sector that we would expect to grow with lower and lower costs. They've been around since 1985. I haven't done a lot with this one, but I really like the price pattern that we already saw. We've rallied off of these lows. We've made higher highs, higher lows. We had a big correction through here, and that channel broke arguably yesterday, and we had follow through today. So I don't think we have any trouble getting back up to 92. But even better is if we're going to get back up to 92 and already have captured maybe 5 to 10% return, if we can clear that high, and if we see rates cut again, we could see the same move that went from 60 to 95. We could see another 50% increase, and I would not be surprised at all to see Altair reach $120 a share. And if you don't want to chase it into today, I would anticipate that you probably see it breathe out to about 85 where we had the gap down. We filled the gap trade above the high. I'd look for about 85, 85.50, somewhere in there, maybe buy a little bit cheaper. Or if you're really interested in trying to set up the trade and benefit from this growth without necessarily chasing it, you could sell a put on here at about 85 for somewhere near $2 if you can get the spread to to be cut in half. So if you sold it for $2, $3 a share on the put, you might be able to get what would be equivalent to a 2.5 or 3% return on risk. Now, as much as these are all stocks that will benefit from a theoretical three rate cuts in 2024 based off that dot plot, remember that if they don't cut rates, if as we get closer to June, we see signs that they have to keep rates high or if inflation is continuing to climb with the fact that oil prices are climbing, then we want to lean into those other stocks like utilities to get a return or energy or areas that we don't need the lower rates to benefit from. And that means we step back into financials and away from real estate. But as it sits, I like the idea of shorting financials, going long real estate, and going wrong, long the tech sector and in some of the small caps if we see those three rate cuts this year.